Expresses itself is in Simcha. The Rebbe would inspire the Elam by Fabrengens and Yomtev. Purim Tovshin Lamed Aleph was the first time that the Rebbe indicated by Fabrengen that you should whistle. The Rebbe put his, both his fingers in his mouth and indicated that you should begin whistling, which was, of course, a major Chiddush, because whistling was not something that was ever done till that point. Definitely not by the Rebbe. After that, sporadically, different moments, different fabrengas where the Rebbe would do the same indication. Clearly, the Rebbe was opening up a new synod of uh, Simcha. Tov Shalom Edvav, the Shchidosh Cheshvan, the Rebbe made a special Tzeschem Neshalom Fabreng, essentially sending all of the guests back to wherever they came from, from Eretz Yisrael, from other countries in the world. And during that Fabreng, the Rebbe indicated that they should whistle. father, who's the publisher and editor of the Algemeine Journal, had his photographer there. He took a picture of the Rebbe whistling. So my father, the next week's newspaper, went and printed a picture of the Rebbe whistling. The Algemeine came out on Wednesday. We don't go straight to the Rebbe. The Rebbe would always get the first Algemeine. I remember Friday night, my father goes to shul. I was in shul, 770. As soon as he walks into the door, he's attacked. But I would put daylight to print a picture like that of the Rebbe whistling. It was, the whistle was seen as not as a positive thing. That week, he gets a letter to the editor, signed by a chosid. He's protesting that the Algemeen printed such a picture of the Rebbe in the newspaper. Time passes. I put in Lamed Vov that same year, put in. Just the surprise of everybody, middle of the fabring, and one of the sikhs begins. Mm-hmm. Absagdinerang. <laughs> 
Und wie schaust du dann gesagt, hat er nie gesagt, dass er es nicht gefällt. Er hat gesagt, befehl ich, wie immer mich wieder in der Ruhe darf bestehen, er kommt von der Frühling hin. When I went to see the Rebbe, the Rebbe goes like this to me. I look at him, ask me to whistle. And I go, pst, little whistle. And he says, ah, like this. Meir Abbasara became the designated hitter, so to speak. He was the, the whistler. It was extraordinary. The whistling changed 770 completely. The chances of the initial single will be set to a hopeful as a metal that niggle there in a mitzvah for Yitzvah Hora, was Yitzvah Tokve is a mitzvah to five months of a This production is made possible through the generosity of the members of the GEM Foundation. Schleich <laughs> Was been proud, Gaiser does have to feel. Ezo a Vedish belev, so it feel. So, but Echit Kayla, the clawless and Nivresia Bashamish, a skinny, the Rinia for Nivda, a Vaya Shimus to Chemusha Bekene, so does I be simple. We are bringing her take it a robe and a gale, a tail of the Gmodes of the Brochus and Shwash Abbas. And the Rinian from Gimel da Tere da Zan onem dek met Milse de Dichese. As in the Heb Ton Lernen dafke me tech Simcha and bei me tech Atzrus, wal der Rechseb an nege zu Zdoke, wie o gepassen. Ich will genorro von Rambam, as in nur sein Beseber von im Joppe ist nicht has verschoben, verkehrt und nicht mas, mas, mas bi. As I say, not as I, not as I, nor with the lost in the funeral, that can be saved upon him. Yochid, but those is echid be pastors as is a glow camo ifani, but they to din in the mebishn. So called the door by the derech hamela, the rib the havai be simcha, because mis meisif in simcha, 
in te in de alle gimel kavim von tela vedo milas hasod was tele pasken as it does sein kol maserhu beholdra gech wer to sich it a tel von a vede sashem von de shem shamay vedo ego da 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 dos ech sein in a nefen von singo o demol bringt us dem sich schlemus in a vede sashem Warum Simcha Peiris Gede, Ados is me vatul und Peiris Dikdorim und der Agbolis, was er kommt beim Sein, mit Adinjoni von Seichel oder andere Geschwenis, bis mit Adbechol, Wopfchol, Wopfchol Nafschro, nur der mit der Avedi in der Nähe von Bechol Meidecho, Abechol Mido Mido, in der Ewig der Kodisch Borcho, in a nation from where I have to, me take avo, was a demol to be as oct in zeer, to gavna, we me zee with a shen be simcha, is a demol to be neichet me ere da spoiz, me lo mailo echet be simcha, as a ver teche from the chasodim, me nistorim, me mustorim, ver to seche teil a nire va a nikle, a teiv lo no tiftach, a teiv in vana neif moser meile simcha. On the hand of the man peiris gedder, from zayn han hoga as all zayn le maile me medide vagbola, where there is vahavta savay le kecho, nit le shem amenas le kabul schar le kayetzi baze, nor vide rambam ben levay baruch en ilchi shuva bisiyuma, und ein Peik Assyrisch bei ihm, ist auch der Mal bringt das Sechis in die Schleimus, aber die Bald hat bei mir dort der alle Herzen Kechis an Nefes bei Schleimus. Was wenn können sie sein bei Schleimus, bei Schase haben wir sich. Eche der Minie von Meidecho, der Minie von Akifisch bei Nefes. Bei Schase er ist aber ewig dabei mit Jahre. Is a demol trechen to the knites and mess me, and he bals in me in midos, and he has a car, but he has not made it, and he has a hand-hoga, 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 and he has a hand-hoga. But this is a demol, when the answer to the answer to the answer, Durch dem, was in seinen Durch genommen mit der Rotze in der Mitte und mit dem Teilung der Mitte, was der Dämmel der Seche der Wede mit der Kirche ist, nimmt ihn bis die Muslim. Und durch den Ruf, was er steht, bis die Muslim in allen Jahren, wo das sie verbunden darf, wenn das sie bei Meilen mit Gäder und Agbollen, durch den Ruf, was Schiro und Simcha, a pain is gathered, ke mudgar, in dem shir, fun de kviz, fun asiri bishvat, bishon ozu, o demote dos me kavev dem kim ha-yil, biar zok te medesh, asvidot, eser shiris, vos nai shiris, vos achon geheven fun meisher abeno, oz yosher meishu, da noch ve arrechen do teiz de maim, seine noch keden da abyul aladei moshia, Da noch ist ein der Schiro Hassiris, mit den Ninjan Hassiri, wenn es nicht kommen, man schert sich keine, wie Gula Hamid ist, war Schwemer, und dort, wo dort sind, das Tolle, der Masseno, war wie der Seno, der Simcho ins Mann hat Gottes, wer das Achorne Massimo, so Simcha Seelom al Rishom, der Schiro wie Simra bis Mann hat Gottes, Vertos Aachona Massima, so the Shiro Hasiris. With materials from the Living Archive, established by the Rohr Family Foundation. Video collection preserved by Benjamin Fetterman, in tribute to his parents. Good luck, good luck everybody.
Um, before I share the story, I wanted to dedicate this story to Hannah Berman's uh, grandmother just recently passed away. Her, her, name, her name was uh, Mimi Basr Uvein. Neshama, Shabin Gan Eden, and be good interceding on behalf of all her descendants and their families, Beseich Kal Yisrael, for all good begashmis of Ruchnius, and speedily be reunited with them with the coming of Mashiach. Also, want to dedicate this tonight Amen. to all, all those in our community near Rufuah Shlema, especially to Baruch Hakeim Mechan Rivka, and Yafa Bas Jant Rivka, and Betzal Ben Peril. And to Machol um, Raviv, Machol Machlof Ben Miriam, have a four. Yafa Rifka Bajana, thank you. Yafa Rifka Bajana, Machol Ben Miriam, Rafua Kreva Shlema. The story I want to share with you tonight is about a chassid of the Tzemach Tzedek and a chassid of Marash, whose name was Rabchaim Yeshua from Kalisk. In time of Tzemach Tzedek, there was a uh, very appropriate this week's Torah portion. This week's Torah portion talks about um, according to Arizal, the subject matter of the Torah portion, Mishpatim, is actually about Gilgal, about reincarnation. And all the different stories, different halachas are connected to the concept of reincarnation and the, why things happen in different places, different times. So on that subject, the Mitla Rebbe describes a an event that happened in his time that caused decades later, time of Tzemach uh, is a story that I'm going to show with you tonight, the decree of Zar Nikolai II, who said that Jewish boys from the age of nine years old should be taken from their homes and be conscripted into the Tsar's army for 25 years. So the Mitlareb and the Altareb and Tzemach Tzedek were all involved in trying to save these uh, these children, trying to rescue them. They were literally kidnapped from their homes and conscripted against their will in the army. And they had great sacrifice, first of all, to prevent them from being kidnapped and to redeem them. Those children were kidnapped and also to strengthen the Jews who were in the Tsar's army. Tzemach Tzedek would visit them and encourage them. And we have um, letters in Tzemach Tzedek about the hero of tonight's story, Chaim Yeshua uh, of Kalisk, and his efforts to help this chassid who was very involved in helping these children. It's very apropos to today's time as well because there are a lot of Jewish children who uh, aren't born in a family that knows about the importance of Yiddishkeit, the importance of Judaism. And we could, although they're not being conscripted in the, in the army, but they aren't really aware of who they are and how they're children of Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, and Sarif, Korach, and Leah. And with a little effort, we can help them have a Jewish education and really, really help them. And we learn tonight in this story what kind of incredible schus, kind of incredible merit this is and what this does. So let's go to the story. Rav Chaim Yeshua lived in a city called Gluchav. And he was visited by another chassid who was a shliach, an emissary of Tzemach Tzedek, I'm sorry, the Reb Marash, to collect stock. This chassid's name was Reb Dave Zev. Dave Zev from Ektunislav. Everyone loves Rosie. Rosie's our hero. Anyways, Dave Zev from Ektunislav, he visited the city. You'd often visit the city of Gluchav. And he would, he, there was an older chassid who would visit Reb Chaim Yeshua. And when he, when he came there one time, Reb Chaim Yeshua, uh, it was in the year Tafre Vav, roughly about uh, 150, 170 years ago, 150 years ago, Tafre Shlam and Vav, you the what year Tafre Shlam and Vav? You'll tell me in a second. Tafre Shlam and Vav, he visited this chassid at that time. And because whenever we'd visit the city, you come to collect staka and you come to share inspiration. This older chassid would, would also share stories with him. And this, this particular visit, uh, Reb Chaim Yeshua said that he feels his end is near. He was very sick. He was, at that time, he was 87 years old. And he asked 
that the Hasidim of the town, the top Hasidim, Rabbi Avram Zalman the Koyin, Rabbi Shemim Menachem the school teacher, Rabbi Fein Fischl the school teacher, they should all come and so this visiting guest should all come to him because he feels his time is, is, is near. And he was sick for about a week, but his mind was very clear until his last moments. And he's told different stories to his visitors and he had a last request. What was his last request? He said that in the year Tav Kuf the Gimel, Tav Kuf Tzad he's not sure which year it was, he had visited the Tzemach Tzedek and he was there for the entire Hanukkah. And throughout Hanukkah, Tzemach Tzedek shared three different Hasidic discourses. And the subject of the discourses was how the Greeks would ask the Jews in the time of the story of Hanukkah to write down on the horn of an ox, so you have to write down, in order to be accepted by the Greeks, you have to write down that you have no share in the God of Israel. And how the Greeks tried very hard to cause us to assimilate and to, to cast any connection with Hashem off and to write down clearly they have no portion of the God of Israel. And the Tzemach Sedek spoke about how the sacrifice to the Jewish people um, was what guaranteed victory for the Jewish people at that time. And Chaim Yeshua was very affected by this, by his discourses. A year, a year later, which means either Tafkov Tzadikhe or Tafkov Tzadikvav, it was one winter night. He was about 40 years old at the time, a little old, over 40. Who knows over 40, Rosie? Okay, good. So he's a little over 40 and he hears a, a knock on the door. He goes out of bed and he opens the door and there's two Jews who are wearing fur hats and dressed in the whole winter gear and they're covered with snow. He gives them Shalom Aleichem, he greets them and he asks them to take off their boots and to go next to the oven and warm up. And he gave them some hot water and some bread and some, some butter and some milk. And they're sitting to eat down, they're eating. And Rabbi Chaim Yeshua said, so I went outside to the stable. And when I went out to the stable, I heard at the other end of the courtyard, I heard the sound of a child crying. But I didn't pay attention to it. I thought probably it's the sound of a, of a cat or something. When I got closer, to the place that the voice came from, I saw her clearly, there's a voice of a child. And I said, who's crying? And this boy said, I heard a trembling voice. And the boy said, I am Binyamin. And I got closer to where the voice was coming from. And I saw that their wagon was parked over there. And there was two children in the wagon. And they were both, and they were tied up. One of them was sleeping and one of them was crying. Well, this story is too scary for you, I think, right? Not scary? It's scary, right? And when I, when I, in those days, because of this decree of the Tsar Nikolai, how did they get these boys to join the army? There were chapers or kidnappers who would try to take kids away from their families. And he realized immediately that these people which are eating in his house, they had taken these kids. And they, were, and they kidnapped them. So he quickly untied them and he brought these kids to his brother Michal's house. And his brother Michal woke up and he told well, Michal, I think that these guys are chapers, these guys are kidnappers and they're probably taking these kids to the Tsar's army. So I, my, I ran to my house and when I got to my house, I went back after I brought the kids safely to my brother's house, I went back to my house and I saw one of the kidnappers is sitting down next to my son, the Ephraim Zalman. And I woke up my family. I told my family what I think, that these guys are kidnappers. And they, and they tied up these kids. So the Jew who is sitting next to my son, the Ephraim Zalman, says to me, I see you have a very good son, but I, don't, I wasn't blessed with such good children. The one who sits in heaven gave me two sick children, they're not normal children, and I have to go bring them to the doctor in Vitebsk to heal them. He's an expert doctor there, and uh, I, I had to tie them up, and that's, and that's what's going on in my life. 
my uh, brother Michal, meanwhile, fed the children and uh, and locked and safely locked them up in a room in his, his house. And he came to my house. When he saw these Jews there, the, he was so angry at them. And he greeted them with the words, welcome, kidnappers, and leave this house immediately. And if not, you'll have a bitter end. So these Jews didn't realize that they that their game was up. And they said, apparently we're not welcome here, we're gonna go. And they went to their wagon and they saw that the kids were gone. They came back to the house and they started screaming, give us our children. But uh, they saw that their cries weren't going to help and they, and they ran and they left. So about a month later, Mechol, the brother of Chaim Yeshua, told, visited Semach Tzedek. And he told Semach Tzedek what had happened. And that Semach Tzedek's face was shining with happiness because he saved these children, right, Rosie? He saved them. He's shining with happiness. And he gave a bracha to Mechol and a bracha to his brother, Chaim Yeshua, a bracha to all of them. And he said, he guard these children for a year. And only after a year can you bring them back to their houses because for, it wouldn't be safe. And they stayed and they learned with the school teacher, Rabbi Ruch Mzev, and they were very successful in their learning. So Chaim Yeshua, seeing all this and seeing how, how, how what, the, what kind of Im- impact this had made, uh, he, was, he said he had a burning desire to continue to be involved in saving Jewish children. And he said, I couldn't hold myself in. And I traveled to the Tzedek I told Tzemach Tzedek, I really want to be involved in this work. So Tzemach Tzedek agreed, and he told me how to do this and what to do. And for three or four months a year, sometimes in the summertime, sometimes in the wintertime, I would travel to different places to save the children. And I was involved in this for seven years until I was caught. How was he caught? What happened was, he went to this city called Kazan. And when he was in Kazan, he was involved in business there. And he, that was a pretext of why he was there, but he really was there trying to find children and to save them. He managed to save eight children, but he needed to find a place to put them. And at that time, this guy who spoke Yiddish and was a Jewish guy, but apparently he was a spy for the government. And he befriended Chaim Yeshua and he did business with him. And as they became friendly, he told this guy about his real reason why he's there to save Jewish children. Oh, wow, what a noble thing. And Chaim Yeshua naively believed that this guy was also interested in helping him. And instead, the guy really betrayed him to the government. And he had these eight children there who was trying to find a place for them. And he was, and the government, the day he was planning to leave, three soldiers, armed soldiers came and they arrested him. Baruch Hashem, the children escaped, but they arrested him, they put him in jail. They took him from jail to jail until he arrived in the area of, um, of Vitebsk in jail. And he stayed in jail for several months. And there's a, there's a letter that Samach Tzedek asking to help this chassid, Tzemach Tzedek, uh, it's a very short letter, but the chassid, Avram Arba, a person who, who was related to this story, um, he was um, related to the story because it was his father-in-law's uh, father who Tzemach Tzedek wrote this letter to, uh, asking him to make an effort to try to f- get this chassid free. Help him, Chaim Yeshua was in prison. So it's interesting, all the notes that uh, this chassid wrote in this letter that Samach Tzedek, one of the things Samach Tzedek writes, do this for my sake, do this to help me. And apparently this chassid writes, Samach Tzedek writes, do this for my sake, because Samach Tzedek asked Rabbi Chaim Yeshua to do this, because this is what he wanted to do. He was doing this as his emissary, and therefore he says, do this for my sake. It's a very fascinating letter, uh, but not for right now. But either way, the, the Tzemach Tzedek asked him to make an effort to get Reb Chaim Yeshua out of prison. And they were successful because 
if you remember a few months ago, I shared the story of Gabriel Neisachain. Gabriel Neisachain, he, remember that story? By the, by the lady who rubbed the, the okay. Anyway, so Gabriel Neisachain, he was close to the governor of, of Vitebsk, and he managed to prevail upon him to free Reb Chaim Yeshua on condition that he would leave the whole area of Vitebsk and no one should know about it. And that's what happened. So he was in prison for a couple of months, but it was it was a, it was very serious. Um, wasn't wasn't simple being in prison. It was it was life and death. But eventually he was freed, and he asked the Machzedek what to do. And so Machzedek told him he should move to Glukhov, and he lived in Glukhov for twenty five years. He would visit er, er, Lubavitch, there is the first time Machzedek, and Machzedek passed away. He visited Eb Marash. Anyways, he came to Machzedek after being involved in the seven years of trying to free Jewish children, and the Machzedek said to him that in the merit of what he's doing, he promises him that he'll have a long life and that he will be imi bim chitzasi. You know what that means, Rosie? That in the same place with Tzema Tzedek is in Gan Eden, this chaser will be in the same place with him in Gan Eden. Is that a, is that, that's really special. The Reb is placed in Gan Eden. That's where he'll be with him in Gan Eden. So the Rechaim Yeshua said, Today or tomorrow, my neshama will return to its maker. My last request is that after they bury me, uh, they should, a, a minion, 10 people should gather at my funeral and they should say the following words. Rebbe, the son-in-law of the previous Rebbe and the grandson of the altar Rebbe, your servant, Chaim Yeshua ben Esther, has passed away. And before he passed away, he made us shluchim mitzvah, he made us as emissaries for a mitzvah to notify the Rebbe that your servant, Chaim Yeshua ben Esther, has passed away. And to remind the Rebbe his promise, that he promised his servant, Chaim Yeshua ben Esther, for his service in, in speaking shum, in redeeming Jewish people from prison, he promised him that he will be with him in the same place in Ganeid. That's what Chaim Yeshua requested from all those who were with him on that day. So this chassid who came back to Marash told the, the Marash that we all promised him. And the next morning, after he dove in morning prayers, he put on the tefillin of Tam, and with a clear mind, he said the Pasuk Shema Yisrael, and he passed away. On that same day, Chaim Yeshua, was, he was taken to his burial, and we all announced what he had requested us to. And when this chassid said, when I came to Reb Marash, I told Reb Marash this whole story, Reb Marash said, Asiya la'ela, that's a phrase from the Zohar, which means action is considered the highest thing. Through doing actual aveda, to actually doing things in this world, you, this brings you to the highest of levels. A smart chassid found and assured for himself a very good place, a beautiful place. My father is a trustworthy person and certainly he will fulfill his request. In other words, certainly he will find a good place in Gan Eden together with the Tzemach Tzem. That's a story. But I think the story is really, as I said before, very relevant to us. There's so many children that we can easily, especially now because all the public schools are still on, on Zoom, and parents are looking for things to do with their children. Baruch Hashem in our shul, we have this program for kids who are in public school. They're able to come to us throughout the week and do their Zooms. And meanwhile, between the Zooms, to learn Torah. And it's really something that, you know, could really you know a child who is not going to a Jewish school and they're doing Zoom. They can come to us throughout the week and learn Torah and Lushma Yisrael and have a fun time. So it's a, it's a great thing to do and a great merit, and not just to get a good place in Gan Eden, but to get a good place when Mashiach will come speedily now, and to speed up the coming of Mashiach. And that's what I want to share tonight. Thank you all for listening. Any questions or comments? All right. Yes, your Oh, is that Baruch Akeim Khan Rivka? Wow. Baruch Akeim Khan Rivka, I want to tell you that you, your iced tea, uh, thank you very much. I. I learned a lot from the comments, uh, the uh, quote in the iced tea cap this week. Uh, very, very brilliant stuff. Thank you for the iced tea. Have a f the, the, the Baruch's birthday was just on Friday. Baruch Shavir of Bracha Vatzlocha. 
The Gashmis of Ruchnius, the Leban, the Yar, the Zunday, the Freil, the Freil. Don't think about Ganadin, Bar. We need you here. Amen, Amen. Zunday, the Freil, the Freil, the Freil. Amen.